Hi, it's fairly early in the morning and um, quite warm already. We are at the beginning of August and yeah, we had a really, really hot July. Um, not unusual in terms of how high the temperature was. It was more that it was non-stop for four to five weeks. Um, yeah, forecast says it should still be that way another couple of days and um, then hopefully some storms will break in, bring some rain and then the temperature should remain around 30 degrees Celsius. Um, I have started my project yesterday. I am making the SD shirt by Justina Lukowska. Here it's um, a simple summer shirt with a really pretty lace detail on the shoulder. My printer is a bit messed up for some reason. Um, but yeah, I um, managed to hurt my um, elbow from too much cabling, I think. Um, so I've done a little knitting break over the last week and I thought uh, I wanted to make a project focus for the summer, making um, a summer, a warm weather knit. Um, and I thought um, I would rather do something a little bit easy um, to get back into knitting and hopefully my elbows won't hurt as much. That's why I thought something mostly stock in it would be best, especially since I am using linen. Uh, I am using um, cherry brown colored linen from Yarn Stories on Etsy. Um, they have a huge selection of pure Lithuanian linen in a massive array of colors and I don't know if you can hear the wasps buzzing around uh, and weights. So I am using what is I believe their four ply, uh, like their fingering weight yarn um, and this is what it looks like. I've talked about linen on the podcast quite a lot. Um, I think it's a really nice fiber to work with. Um, it's really pleasant to wear in the in the summer and it has a very good stitch definition and it, it has a really interesting um, um, drape and ways of working with it. Um, but it has what I don't believe is a downside, but something that you might want to take into consideration uh, if you're used, like I am, to working with protein fibers is that um, it lacks elasticity, so when you knit it, it can feel quite harsh on your hands and it can result in um, some sort of a messy gauge situation. Um, I have used previously Linumuka, which is fairly similar to this. And the weight meterage ratio of linen um, can be misleading. For example, this would be like a classic um, fingering weight I have. Um, let me do some. <laughs> yeah, I have about four bowls of 100 grams and they're um, 400 meters each. Uh, so 400 meters, 100 grams, yeah, that's normal fingering weight. But when you look at it, it is so thin and the thing is it will not uh, bloom when you wash it. Uh, it will get smoother, it will um, even out the fabric and get a lovely, lovely feeling, but it will not fill in the gaps as much as um, a wool would do. And so what happens is that you often have to work at um, a rather tight gauge for what you would expect from that weight meterage ratio. So for example, even though I am working with something that is a fingering weight, I am using it double. 
and it is a bit uh, thicker. If you know Linomuka, uh, this one feels a bit thicker. So that's slightly better, especially in that case, because the gauge for the Estee shirt is 22 centimeters, uh, 22 stitches per 10 centimeters, which is a, f a very loose um, fingering weight gauge for something that's drapey. And that wouldn't cause me any issue with wool. Um, but I was a bit concerned if that linen would actually work for that project because I wasn't sure that even if I were to hold it double, I would be able to get that gauge. Uh, it looks like I'm doing fairly okay. I haven't swatched because <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. I'm just too lazy. Um, it's an oversized shirt. Uh, so I'm fairly confident that even if my gauge is slightly off, it will fit me. Um, I am making the second size, which aims at the bust circumference of 109 centimeters, which is um, uh, plenty of ease for me, over 20 centimeter ease. So that's, um, that's gonna be okay. But yeah, I have started yesterday and looking at my fabric it looks like i'm good um obviously it's just very tiny and it's flat for now so it might not be the same accurate go gauge for all the project but it looks like i have the right number of stitches um do you mind my doggies are licking everything in the garden uh, it looks like i have the right um gauge and it looks like the fabric is going to be pretty good uh, a little bit see-through maybe but not as bad as i expected i'm using 3.75 millimeter needles um higher higher sharp um because they're really smooth and yeah i just figured it would be a little bit easier on my hands you're a bit low but Yes, so I have started yesterday and um, I'm very happy because I feared it would be um, wasp attack. Um, I feared it would be really um, simple as a project, you know, just in the round, mostly stockinette project. Uh, but actually, what I didn't realize is that this is a contiguous set in sleeve pattern. So um, it's a method of knitting a setting sleeve shape without um, having to go back and forth a lot of time and without having to shape a sleeve cap with uh, short rows. I've heard of that method a lot, but I had never tried it, so I'm quite happy <laughs> about this surprise. And yeah, basically you start on by casting the back and the shoulders. And I have already started the lace motif, as you can see. And then you increase um, for the front and the back a little bit. I'm not so sure how this all works. Um, it looks like then I'm going to have to join in the round, but then later also uh, work flat the front and the back separately. Um, so that's going to be interesting. And yeah, this is my project for this summer, project focus. You are such a baby. My parents left for a couple of weeks on holidays and Mr. has been crying, refusing to eat. You do know some dogs actually get abandoned and this is really awful. So your comedy here is a bit insulting to these poor dogs. I'm right here with you. Oh, poor thing.
talk about tea on the podcast. I know a lot of um, podcasters actually drink tea while filming. Um, I don't do it, just... I don't know. I don't like gulping sounds, I guess. And I have to edit so much um, mispronunciations and um, things that uh, if I add tea drinking to the party, um, I think my podcast will be even more cut than it already is. And um, yeah, so that's why I don't... um, share what I'm drinking on the podcast but I do love um I do love tea and um I I like uh, fruity teas infusions but most of all I like green tea I like proper plain green tea um I don't put any milk or honey um on it um the only kind of tea that I will add anything is chai tea that I will brew in milk and maybe add um, honey in it, but yeah, even without the honey, it just does good. But my favorite type of tea is green tea, and um, I especially like Chinese green tea. Um, I hope you can't hear her munching so loudly. Um, but yeah, I do like uh, a certain type of sencha, Japanese tea, but. Um, Japanese green tea, I feel, are a bit, they're a bit salty, if that makes sense. Like, they they have, like, a citrusy, seaweed type of smell. Nessie, arrête. And, yeah, you stop. And, um, yeah, I prefer Chinese green tea because they're a bit more round um <laughs> it's fine fascinating the vocabulary that is built around tea flavors uh, just like wine it, it just never really really makes sense but yeah this is a sample that i got um from palais d'été which is um a really famous french um tea company they have um lot of authentic teas they do blends of fruits and flavors as well but most of the time it's authentic pure um, teas they have a really good selection of green teas um, and this is a sample I got from them from the last order this is a long gin yeah I haven't tried that one yet but we'll see and I got a new mug enjoying the construction so far it is quite interesting um, to see how it's working out but um, not quite understanding it yet um, so you start by casting on for the back and hitting this back and forth for a little bit to have a higher neck 
then um, at the same time you have already the shoulder panels so it kind of looks like it will be um, either a thick beginning of a raglan or a saddle shoulder um, and you so you start with the back here and you have these beautiful panels and you keep increasing on both sides of them and it's quite rapid increases because your increases uh, happen uh, on every row um, then you cast on for the front to join and you knit in the round for a little bit so so far that was understandable and seemed pretty much like a raglan construction but now what I'm doing is actually knitting the front flat for a little bit so you can see I've separated the shoulder panels this beautiful lace here on both sides and I've been knitting this which is the front of the sweater flat and actually forgot to click um, and then I am going to do the same thing for the back so I assume that then I will join this together and that when I will eventually finish the sleeves I'll be picking up around these 10-ish um, centimeters that uh, I had to knit flat but yes it is really interesting and I unfortunately <laughs> have a lot of unnecessary, unnecessary ends because someone <laughs> I suspected to be Nessie, uh, our little puppy, um, someone thought this was a toy. So I came back to the living room one day uh, to uh, a really really messy cake. By nature knitting linen out of a cake is maybe not the most clever idea uh, because it tends to get tangled and catches upon itself quite a lot um, so yeah on top of that she definitely played with it which made a whole mess so I had to cut a few times and that's why I have a lot of ends that are not supposed to be there but yes I believe my um, front portion is almost done I think this would be my last wrong side row and then I will um, do the same for the back and yeah even though I'm holding the linen double it's really really crisp and it looks nice it makes me curious of knitting um, more intricate lace with linen actually but yeah this looks really interesting I believe I did say the color name was um, cherry brown, and it's quite funny. It, yeah, I've said it a few times that this is probably one of my favorite colors. I have a lot of favorite colors, but this happens to be one that I also think is quite flattering for my skin tone and rather dark um, eyes and hair. Uh, I'm going to have to um, hand knit top in very very similar color and yeah I have another sweater quantity that is close to it maybe it's a little bit more pink but it's still fairly close and I'm very tempted to get another one maybe I'll try to um, shift towards bronze for this autumn and winter. I really like um, bronzy tones as well but I'm not having a lot of them because sometimes they tend to go towards yellow which is not so great for me so I'll see uh, if I can find a really good good browns maybe make a sweater out of it my mind is in a lot of different places because I am knitting this um, very season appropriate linen top for myself but at the same time I am designing a lot of winter um, 
things at the moment, uh, color work, really um, heavier weights, accessories and garments. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's quite funny in August to I feel like I'm split between the summer and the coming colder month, which. Quite frankly, I can't wait for it. It's kind of funny that August month being split between it's still it's still really hot. The summer is still there but you just can't help but looking towards autumn. Can't um, probably braid my hair just yet. It's not long enough. Um, I've been fuzzy with my hair all the time. I, I I am easily bored of it. Like I'm easily bored of everything, and my hair is no exception. And I I've really wanted it for a long time now to have it really long again, like at least uh, my waist and um, yeah the reason I want that is because I want to just put my hair in a braid I really like the look of braids and I think it will really suit my style and kind of how effortless than they are I'm sorry for this really vain topic um, but yeah the thing is I just Getting my hair this long it just takes so long and I keep cutting it. I just I just can't help but cutting it every once in a while. A couple of years ago I had a pixie cut which was um which was really fun. <laughs> but yeah, um too much maintenance. Dogs are ruffling something sweet and I don't know if I want to make crepe or if I want to make waffles I haven't had waffles in a very long time so I think I'm gonna go with that <laughs>
I'm just going around and around on the body right now. Um, yeah, pretty mindless. Um, I just wanted to mention because there is something about linen when you knit it in the round is that it tends to bias because of how it's spun. That's why a lot of uh, patterns that call for linen are um, knitted flat because if you just make um, a completely round garment, uh, you might end up having something that twists, which can be quite um, annoying. <laughs> Now the linen I'm using is um, plied and I'm holding it double and there are uh, fake seams um, on either side of the body, like a pearl stitch. Um, I believe that all of this can sort of help the, the knitting not to bias, but I'm still pretty sure that it might happen if I go in the run for too long. Um, thankfully, the body is quite cropped, so I might be okay. I am just um, from time to time checking everything, letting the the garment hang, um, holding it up to see if. Um, unfortunately, it starts uh, having some twist to it. Um, so far, so good. I'm gonna keep uh, an eye on it, and uh, hopefully, I'll be able to uh, just leave it as is. And the body is finished. Um, yeah, as you can see, it has a little bit of um, short rows at the end that makes the uh, M, the hem curve slightly, which I think is really cute. And uh, speaking of short rows, you know I really like Japanese short rows. I've been raving about them um, several times, and um, someone uh, tried them on. Uh, I believe it was a cotton linen blend, and um, yeah, they told me that they weren't um, looking so good, so we kind of thought that maybe the fact that it's a non-elastic thread might make it a little bit um, more visible. So I decided to still give it a go, just to to know what's up. So I did do Japanese short rows here, and I don't know how well you're going to be able to tell. Indeed, it's not as, you see that they're here, it's not as impressive as it is with uh, wool, content yarn, um, but I still think it's fairly decent. And the thing is, um, I think it looks just as visible as German short rows. German short rows, when you look at the line of stitches, you suddenly have one stitch that goes to one side and yeah, maybe it's quite subtle, but maybe since the first time I noticed it, I, I only see that. So yeah, maybe that's why I'm a bit peculiar about this. And I think the, the Japanese short rows kind of give the same impression um, on a linen blend uh, while they're completely flawless with wool. Here, it's not so magic, but um, yeah, maybe it also is okay because I just went into the rib um, just after that. Um, but I think it's fine. I might one day try them on the back of a neck because if they are indeed really visible, um, then that will for sure uh, tell me what to think about them for non-elastic yarns. But yeah, the body is done. And now I'm going to pick up the neckline. Now, as you can probably tell, the neckline is super wide. Um, and I, I've looked at the other projects on Ravelry and they don't seem to fall off anyone's shoulders. So maybe I, I made a size too big for me, but I think um, the drape uh, and the ease of it is going to look really good. So what I'm going to try is pick up a tighter neckline so the pattern says to pick up four stitches um, out of five I'm going to try to pick two out of three and hopefully um, I plan on making a substantial uh, ribbing at the neck um, hopefully that will um, make it so that it doesn't fall off my shoulders and yeah then I'm just uh, I will just have the sleeves left just some ribbing at the sleeves and then off to blocking and I'm really curious to see how this blocks out because the very rapid increases next to the shoulder panel 
um, they make this sort of fold effect, which is, can be quite cute. It looks, may look intentional depending on how it blocks. Um, but yeah, I believe I'm going to try to make it a little bit um, flatter. But yeah, on to the neckline. <laughs> wonky phone there it is so that is not part of the design please uh, i finished my este shirt so you can see the nice lace details i um did a few modifications for the neckline which i wanted to um walk you through so basically when I um, finished the body I tried it on and yeah it was really wide as you can see if you look where the lace panel start this is where the neckline was so no one wants to see your bum so <laughs> I um, I didn't want something that would fall off my shoulders so I decided that I would modify it. The neckline for the pattern is only two centimeters of rib. And so what I did is that I picked up two stitches per three, like I told you. Um, but this was still um, quite wide because it was relatively even. If you look at my pickup line, it's very even. So it was still very wide. And so what I decided to do is to decrease in the rib. So I knitted two rib rows even. I then decreased and I decreased when you decrease in rib, you have to decrease to make double decreases so that the rib pattern stays consistent. So what I did is that I decreased four times 
around the neckline so two here and two here um, I did that so that my decreases would look consistent with the patterning so that it would be a continuation of the increase of the shaping here so I did like knit three togethers here and SSSK here uh, and the same backwards um, and I did that two times so two rows rib even, one row decrease, one row even, one row decrease and then I just continued the ribbing until I thought it looked um, wide enough and I'm very happy with the result. Um, this is one of the best fitting uh, garments that I ever knitted. You're very handsome but I'm going to need to show them how the shirt fits, love. Uh, so it is really one of the best fitting garment I ever did. It is um, slightly boxy, not terribly boxy, but it's really comfortable. Uh, you can see here, whoop, you can see the tail, the curved hem at the sides, and it's really nice. Like I suspected, the kind of folding effect that you have here because the increases around the shoulder panels are so rapid. It stayed even after blocking, but I don't mind it. It's, it makes like a nice folded drapey effect. And the lace blocked really well. I'm gonna insert shots of me like <laughs> standing just so that you can see um, how it fits a little bit better. Yeah, the neckline is raised at the back. Yeah, um, for sure the ribbing on the neck and on the sleeves is wider than what the pattern uh, sample shows. Um, but I don't mind, I think it's uh, suitable, it looks really nice. <sighs> Seriously, this is so comfortable with the linen and the drape. It's, um, I am really happy with this. It's my third linen uh, top. My first one is my peony top and it's slightly cropped, it's V tank top cropped and it looks really nice and it fits really well. My second one is my Joran top which is a longer tank top with a higher neck and it fits nicely as well. It's a little bit um, more <laughs> tight around here but this is the comfortable summer garment that I was aiming at and that I was kind of lacking um, and yeah I think it's gonna look really nice just some pair of shorts or jeans in the summer and I am really happy that I have it uh, now that September <laughs> is starting. Uh, it's going to remain quite hot here so I'm definitely going to wear it for the next month. But yeah, um, I think it's just a really really nice garment. It's really pleasant in it. It goes quite quickly uh, once you've done the body. Um, once you've done like the separation, the body, even though it's just, you know, it's just plain um, stockinette and with the fake seams here. It didn't bias at all, you know, I was talking about this. There's not at all any twist. It really falls really well. So I'm really happy with that as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave you with some more shots of me swallowing around just to show you how it fits. And yeah, I really recommend the SDT to, to try uh, to start with Summer Knit because it is a beautiful pattern and as you can see, it totally works with um, a plant fiber if you want something lighter uh, than a wool blend. So yeah, this was my project focus for the summer and I don't know yet what I would do next for this uh, video series. I was considering making a smaller uh, type of project for the autumn winter. Um, my cat wants to fight, it seems. Um, but yeah, I don't know yet what I will do or when I will do it, but I had lots of fun making this video and I hope you enjoyed watching it. And yeah, thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye!